Thanks for the ride, Sonic. A mad bat. Where have you been? Oh, Sonic just wanted to show me the site, so after the last episode, I thought I'd take a two-week break and get- a Two weeks? It's been a six months. The Olympics are over. Everyone's gone. The stands are empty. Huh, I guess traveling at Sonic speed messed with my perception of time. Hey, the, the Winter Olympics are happening now, right? Internet, welcome to Game Theory, the show that gets tens across the board, assuming the judges grade based on effort. And while the rest of the internet is arguing about whether the next Mario Kart should be a full Nintendo crossover, we're talking about the only crossover that really matters, Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games. Yep, friends, we're finally gonna finish what we started off six months ago and figure out who's more likely to win between Mario and Sonic at the Olympics. Or at least the wacky set of forgotten Olympic events that I arbitrarily chose because let's be honest, when it comes to the 100 meter dash, or honestly anything that involves any sort of athleticism we all know is gonna win, it's Sonic. I'm talking about those Olympic classic events like motorized water sports, land motor sports, solo synchronized swimming, pistol dueling, club swinging. But despite this list of wacky events, I failed to come up with a definitive conclusion for who the ultimate victor would be. They were just too evenly matched. At the end of the last episode, the final tally was two medals for Mario, two for Sonic, and one undecided. Which means that I've gotta go deeper. I gotta find events that are even weirder to prove once and for all, who is the better of the two? Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for our tiebreaker round. Let the games resume. Let's start off with one that I teased about last episode. One of the weirdest events that I came across while I was researching, town planning. Part of the architectural design category of Olympic events. Yeah, apparently they decided it was worth creating an entire event category for architectural design. Hey Medina High School, where was the varsity architecture team, huh? Go Team T-Square! Making this event even stranger though is the fact that the town planning event actually had a history of rigged judging. Yeah, in an event where you could basically design anything you wanted, every gold medalist won the town planning architecture category by submitting a design for a sports facility. Because of course they did. The jocks had to take over what little hope teenage Matt Pat had for a varsity letter jacket. It's not my fault that show choir was never deemed to be an athletic event. I'll have you know that our choreography was very aggressive, thank you. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, maybe the town planning event should have been renamed the athletic stadium design event, but uh, questionable judging bias aside, which of our two competitors would fare better in this category? Well, need I remind you, friends, that Mario is a plumber by profession, meaning that he knows a thing or two about building design, at least when it comes to waste removal. But he wasn't just content to fix your house, no, he became a builder in his own right thanks to Super Mario Maker 2's story mode, where Mario helps a bunch of hapless toads build Princess Peach's castle, with Mario doing most of the work as usual. That being said, while Nintendo's level creator is certainly better known, you might be surprised to learn that Sega actually released an official Sonic the Hedgehog level creator. And it was way back in 2009, years before Mario Maker hit the scene. Yeah, this one came as a big surprise to me. It was actually released on the Play Sega website, an online service where you could play emulated Sega games. And if you happen to be a paying VIP member of the website, you could have access to various level designers, including one for Sonic games. There wasn't anything too earth shattering about it. You were given basic tiles, the ability to add rings, springs, enemies, you know, basically Mario. Mario Maker, but with Sonic stuff. In a cool feature though, every time someone played your level, you would actually get rewarded with rings, which was the currency of the website. And likewise, if you played someone else's level, same thing, you'd get rings based on how well you did. So there was a real incentive for you to create and explore around the site. Sadly, not enough incentive, because the whole thing was shut down two years later. More to our purposes though, the Sonic the Hedgehog level creator, while a cool forgotten piece of history, isn't exactly a demonstration of Sonic's architectural prowess. It's not like Sonic was the one physically creating the level, unlike the story mode from Mario Maker 2. Now, construction work and architecture work aren't exactly the same thing, but I'm still gonna have to give the town planning award to Mario. For our next event, let's turn our attention to a category that involves jumping. <coughs> Not that type of jump. <coughs> that type of jump. Equestrian high jump. Cause you know that when I see a large four-hooved mammal, I'm thinking that thing has got some mad ups. You see, no equestrian events were held at the first modern Olympics in 1896. Five were featured in 1900, including this one, as well as horse long jump. Neither one went particularly well or got a second chance. Anyway, my first impulse was that Mario would come out on top. After all, a human has got to be better at horseback riding than a prickly hedgehog, right? I mean, in all of my research, Sonic has never ridden 
ridden a horse in any of his games. Not even in Sonic and the Black Knight, where people are on horseback everywhere. Seems kind of like a missed opportunity there, Sega. Clearly, this is the only reason the game got such poor reviews. But even though horses don't play a role in the games, they do show up in the comics. Let me call your attention to issue 41 of the Sonic Archie comics from 1993, where Sonic, after defeating King Acorn, takes over riding the horse before portaling back to the real world. Though, not really sure how much horse riding skills needed when the horse is just able to fly through the air like that. What about issue 140 of Sonic the Comic, published back in 1998, where on page 2 you'll notice a Hey Boomers reference. They're old and they're proud, and apparently they're reading Sonic comic books. But after being greeted, we see an Old West story where, shockingly, hedgehogs are riding horses like professional cowboys. Granted, it's Amy doing it, but I think the general lesson applies. Plus, on the next page, courtesy of Kaylee Sipple from Lainden Essex, we see the blue blur on a horse, so it must be canon. By the way, congrats on that digital watch win, Kaylee. So, what about horses in Mario? Well, there's not many. Believe it or not, they were originally planned to be in Super Mario 64, but that was scrapped, and the horse got moved over to Ocarina of Time. And from there, horses just never really showed up. Sure, they're in Mario Sports Superstars, but dipping into the sports-based games is kind of what we're trying to avoid here. So, eliminating that, the only time that we could find Mario on a horse was in a single minigame from the recent Super Mario Party. It's just a glorified rhythm game, but hey, he's there, riding a very small horse in a very straight line. Don't ask about the logistics of the Goomba riding next to him. You know what? I just gotta call this one. Sonic and friends are seen riding much more confidently. They're also much lower weight than the pasta-swirling Mario, which, in a horse jumping competition, is gonna matter a lot. I think we chalk this one up for the hedgehog, tying things back up to 3-3. Three to three. If you'll recall, last episode we put Mario and Sonic against each other in both water motorsports and land motorsports. So, I think it only makes sense to complete the trifecta. Time to get airborne! Yep, airborne vehicles did make an Olympics appearance, but we're not talking about airplanes or helicopters. <laughs> oh no, friends. This Olympic event took place years before the Wright brothers. Back in 1900, the Summer Olympics included a ballooning event. But not hot air balloons like we understand them today. No, my friends, these were gas balloons. But not helium. They were filled with hydrogen and coal gas, which allowed them to fly higher and further than normal hot air balloons, but at the expense of being highly combustible floating bombs. Kind of makes you wonder if a gold medal is really worth it at that point. Anyway, they would phase off in a range of challenges, including how far they could travel, how long they could fly, how high they could go, how close they could fly to a target, things like that. Now, Mario is no stranger to balloons of all shapes and sizes. He controls them, he takes romantic rides with Peach in them, and the Mario Party series is full of games where Mario attaches balloons to his body so he can hover in the air, skydive out of literal planes, even use them to send his loved ones into deadly freefalls. <laughs> Look at how happy he is after doing this. Dude has got something wrong with him. Oh, wait. And when it comes to precision flying, we have mini games like this where Mario pilots a balloon-based vehicle to avoid oncoming cannon fire from his friends. When it comes to balloons, Mario is tough to beat. Sonic, though, is also a balloon expert. Probably the most notable appearance is in Sonic Lost World, a game that, much like the Wii U platform it was released on, is mostly forgotten at this point. This game was... it was good. Basically, Sonic's version of Mario Galaxy. The most notable thing about it was that it had some of the coolest crossover levels ever as Sonic ran through both Yoshi's Island and and Legend of Zelda themed levels. Yeah, that is Sonic homing attacking Astalfos and collecting rupees instead of rings. Super cool stuff there. Anyway, in the game there are these remote control vehicles that are created by Tails. In order to make them, you had to collect materials from the Nintendo 3DS version of Sonic Lost World, then build them, then transfer your creation to the Wii U version of the game. It was a dumb system, but it allowed the player to craft remote controlled balloon vehicles that could then fly around the levels. Vehicles that also had to be very precise in their controls in order to fly around the various obstacles. Looking at both competitors' experience here, I think we have to give the win to Mario. He's better with a wider variety of balloons, he knows enough about them to leap out of a plane using a balloon as a parachute, and, unlike Sonic, his balloons don't seem to be remote controlled by an off-screen player too, which seems like something that might be disqualified by the judges. Just be careful of those fireballs, Mario. Those balloons are combustible. Anyway, that brings our running score to 4-3 to three in favor of the plumber. Now, we could go back 
and forth like this all day and have another dozen episodes on this darn series, so I think it's time that we just make it into a speed round. Forgotten Olympic sports, let's go! Fishing from 1900. Mario fishes a lot in the Mario Party series, whereas Sonic, yeah, Sonic fishing was in fact a thing, but we never actually see Sonic fishing in it. The whole thing feels like Sonic deciding to try fishing, buying a $200 fishing rod, and then getting bored after 15 seconds. Leave the fishing to big the cat there, Sonic. This one goes to Mario. Bowling from the 1988 games. Sonic can be seen bowling in Sonic Bowling, while Mario does bowling in various Mario Party titles. Technically, Mario has more complicated bowling games, but he also uses a ball that he can apparently remote control from the sidelines, so I don't know, gotta call this one a draw. Cricket from the 1900 Olympic Games. This one is solidly in favor of the blue blur. Sonic Cricket actually exists. It's a game that was exclusive to India for Sonic's 20th anniversary. Mario has played almost every sport, but Cricket is one that he missed. Probably couldn't figure out the rules. Point Sonic. Firefighting. Yep, this was actually part of the Olympics back in 1900. And though I'm sure Sonic would do a bang-up job dashing around to put out the fires with pure speed, but if they were forced to use traditional methods like humans are, thanks to Super Mario Sunshine, Mario takes this one hands down. Gaelic football, which is kind of like a combination of American football and soccer. Now, I know that both Mario and Sonic play soccer in the Mario and Sonic Olympic series, but I'm trying to look for their experiences outside of that specific franchise of games. For instance, Mario has his own set of soccer games, Super Mario Strikers and Mario Strikers Charge, along with there actually being a football game that was in development at one point for him. So this guy's familiar with both halves of the equation. Sonic, meanwhile, has no American football experience and surprisingly doesn't even have a game where he's played soccer. Even Mega Man had a soccer game. Anyway, Sonic and friends do play soccer in one episode of the Sonic Boom series. Kill my soul to score another goal. And they're not very good, nearly getting beaten by their evil robot doppelgangers. The only way they're able to win is by... Ugh, roll the clip. Oh, Sonic, what have they done to you? Anyway, based on that, I have to give the Gaelic football win to Mario, as well as any other football-related events that have been canceled from the past, like American football and Australian football. Sonic and Mario both have tennis games, with Sega Superstars Tennis and the Mario Tennis series, so an old event like Jeu de Pomme from 1908, which was a precursor to modern-day tennis, would likely end in a draw. Korf Ball, meanwhile, a Dutch ball game similar to basketball, would likely go to Mario thanks to his game Mario Hoops 3-on-3, three three, and thanks to Sonic Sonic's complete lack of any basketball-related experiences. And last, but certainly not least, there have been a number of hand-to-hand -hand combat demonstration events over the years, like Savat, Glimma, and Budo, which I believe would actually go to Sonic. Sure, both characters take part in Super Smash Bros., but Sonic actually has two additional fighting games under his belt, Sonic Battle and Sonic the Fighters. Thus, three points over to him. And there you have it, the grand conclusion, Mario comes out on top with the most gold medal wins. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking that I'm probably biased, that I went into this trying to prove that Mario was better than Sonic, that I chose events that would purposefully make Sonic look bad because that's kind of my whole thing on this channel. I'm always dunking on Sonic for some reason. But the truth is, Sonic was always destined to lose. Looking at the results, Sonic may indeed be the fastest thing alive, but Mario is just a more well-rounded character. His franchise has spawned so many sport-related spin-off titles and the Mario Party series can literally throw anything at him at any moment. So it's no wonder that when it comes to these old, weird, off-the-wall Olympic games, where you're trying to do everything from flying balloons to solo synchronized swimming, he's the one who's gonna come out on top. Sonic would be great at the real Olympic Games, you know, the ones that require actual speed and endurance, but for the games that have been lost to time largely because they lack all of that stuff, yeah, Mario is gonna take the pasta. And as far as the actual Olympics go, hey, as your ratings continue to suffer year after year, maybe consider making club swinging and pistol dueling a thing again. The internet would love to see some meme sports thrown in there get him to care about watching you again. But hey, that's just a theory. A game theory. Thanks for watching.